I don't know about you, but fasting is not something that I understand very well. It's actually not even something that I do very well or do very often. But I was convicted by the passage I was reading today, not just of the purpose of fasting, but also the necessity to do it, at least in some form. Now, at the very beginning, let me just say this. If you have or if you are or have ever struggled with an eating disorder, then fasting from food is not for you. It just isn't for you. It would be like me uh, giving a drink to an alcoholic. If fasting from food is something that triggers a destructive pattern in your life, then that is not something you're called to. But fasting doesn't have to be limited to food. Before we dive in, I needed to say that disclaimer, but but before we dive in, let, let me read the passage that I'm struggling with, that I'm wrestling with today. It's Matthew chapter, uh, excuse me, <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 and following. Jesus says, When you fast, do not look somber as the hypocrites do, for they disfigure their faces to show others they are fasting, trying to just get people to notice them. It says, Truly I tell you, they've received their reward in full. If you're fasting for attention, then once you receive attention, you've actually received the goal of the fasting to begin with. But the purpose of fasting is, is much bigger than attention. That's what Jesus is trying to say. Verse 17, but when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. In other words, look refreshed. Look like that you are uh, totally fine. There's nothing different about today than there was yesterday. Why? Because the purpose of fasting is not attention. And if you receive attention, then, then, then what it is that your goal for fasting has already been fulfilled. He says, instead, look refreshed so that attention doesn't replace the gift that you can receive through fasting. Verse 18, so that it will not be obvious to others that you are fasting, but only to your father who is unseen. And your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. First of all, I want to point out that there are two words that Jesus uses in connection to fasting. In this verse, or in these couple of verses that, that we need to that we need to embrace. In matter of fact, it's the word that begins verse 16. When, when you fast. He says it again in verse 17, but when you fast, and the word when assumes that you're going to do it, that it is happening. <laughs> It doesn't say if you fast, it says when you fast. So there's a part of it where I initially was convicted by this small little word. Where if I am not engaging the discipline of fasting, according to Jesus, I'm missing something. But again, fasting doesn't have to mean just food. I, I, I am a Protestant. I need to say that right now. I'm a Protestant. <laughs> but I practice the Catholic teaching of Lent every year leading up to Easter. Why? For 40 days, what Lent is, is a time period of fasting, of actually taking things away from your normal rhythm, disrupting your rhythm by either taking things away or adding things in. That's what Lent is supposed to be. And all that Lent does is for 40 days that taking away or adding into of an element to disrupt your rhythm. What that does is it prepares your heart to receive the resurrected king. That's all that, that's all that Lent is. But there, there's something about that that teaches me about what fasting is. Fasting is a clearing space to receive. Uh, Christmas, whenever it comes up every year, we kind of have this routine where we do a parade through the kids' rooms. Or we even, as our older kids, we, we tell them, hey, listen, you're about ready to get a bunch of new stuff. So what I need you to do is to go into your room and clean out a bunch of toys that you just have not messed with over the past year. Just clear out stuff or, or even clothes with my daughter. It's like, listen, you need to go in there and get rid of a bunch of the clothes that you have because you're about ready to receive more. Fasting is similar. We are clearing out space in our heart by actually disrupting our rhythm, 
putting ourselves in a, pos a position to receive. Clearing out space so that we can receive more or maybe different or maybe for the first time things that the Lord desires to pour into, into us. Fasting is an essential component because what you are doing is you are saying, I want to create a greater capacity in my heart, in the space of my soul to receive the Lord. Therefore, I'm going to take away certain things or add certain things in. And what do I mean by that? Add certain things in order to clear space? Yes. See, there's times whenever I disrupt my rhythm by saying during the time of Lent, I'll say, for the next 40 days, every day at 12 o'clock, I am going to set my timer. And for 15 minutes, I am going to merely sit and be still before the Lord. I'm inserting something into my space that disrupts my rhythm to create a greater capacity to receive the Lord. Sometimes what you need to do is to fast from work. Sometimes what you need to do is to fast from things. Sometimes what you need to do is to fast from food. But the goal of fasting is to disrupt your basic rhythm, to disrupt the things that you do every single day as a routine without thinking in order to position yourself to receive more of the Lord. The goal is not to receive attention, as Jesus reminds us in Matthew 6. The goal is to receive that which cannot be seen, that which cannot be touched, that which cannot be handled. The goal is to receive more of the Lord. And sometimes, like Christ in Philippians 2, what I need to do is to empty myself of myself so that the Lord can pour himself into me. This next week, I challenge you guys to choose one thing. It could be food. It could be electronics. It could be email. It could be social media. Choose one thing to fast from or one thing that you're going to insert into your schedule to disrupt your rhythm, to create a greater, pass it, to create a greater capacity to receive more and more of the infinite Lord. I love you guys. Have a good week.